Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be exploring something a little bit closer to home. We're going to be talking about some of the new and quite incredible discoveries in regards to ants, some of the most fascinating creatures on the planet. And technically speaking, the most successful creatures on the planet as well. Way, way more successful than most of the other animals we've discovered so far. The animals that might one day help us understand how various types of aliens might evolve as well, simply based on the successes that ants have experienced here on Earth. And the actual study and the topic we're discussing is in regards to something that most people have no idea ants are capable of. They're capable of sharing their metabolism and, in essence, sharing their stomach. They literally have what you would call a communal stomach. Or, as the scientists refer to it, they have a distributed metabolism. In other words, right here, by sharing their fluids, they're literally sharing metabolism, sharing immunity, and a lot of other functions that are normally done in a single organism. And that's something that was recently discovered in one of the studies that you can find in the description, and something that can kind of help us understand why, first of all, ants are so successful and are able to survive in very, very different conditions, but also kind of helps us understand how these social animals work, so not just ants, other animals as well, and thus help us understand how various types of alien creatures, if they exist somewhere out there, might evolve as well. But I guess let's start with some of the basics. So as you probably know, ants are extremely social and they sort of depend on each other for survival. They also generally have very defined roles or castes as they're known, with certain types of ants even having several castes within the caste. For example, this species right here tends to have two different queens with most ants generally possessing at least some type of a worker caste, some type of a warrior caste, some sort of a drone caste, which are usually very tiny males capable of reproduction, and of course the queen itself, with the majority of roles in the ant society being performed by various infertile females. So, for example, a typical warrior or a typical worker would be a female incapable of reproduction. And based on various genetic analysis, today it's believed that they evolved from the social wasps that used to exist around the time of dinosaurs, during the Cretaceous period, and might have become successful because of the success of various flowering plants that uh, sort of spread across the planet a little bit before that. And so in the last 150 million years or so, they've essentially evolved to be extremely diverse. Some of them have extremely small colonies with just a few individuals, some of them have humongous colonies, but for the most part, ants are extremely successful. They basically live on pretty much most of the continents on the planet, with the exception of Antarctica, and there are only a few very remote locations on the planet where there are no ants at all. But today a lot of biologists believe that ants, like a lot of other social insects, technically represent a superorganism. In other words, a single ant represents just a tiny piece of a really large structure. It's basically sort of like a single finger of a human body. And a lot of modern studies seem to prove this even further, with every single study essentially showing that these organisms operate as a single entity. They basically work together to support a single colony which as a result makes them exceptionally successful. So successful, as a matter of fact, that they probably represent approximately 20% of the entire biomass of the planet. And they're also obviously extremely complex. First of all, it's already been shown in various experiments that they're able to learn and teach each other. They actually have teachers teaching, uh, for example, younger ants to do certain tasks. They're also able to solve relatively complex problems, and they're so good at it that there's even an entire branch of computer science, known as the ant colony optimization algorithm, that often uses ant colonies to try to solve various extremely complex problems. Problems in, for example, probability, or various optimization problems that sometimes are even more efficiently solved by ants than actual computers. But their complexity doesn't end there. They are also known for this interesting phenomenon referred to as trophallaxis. Here is an example of what this sort of looks like. Trophallaxis refers to the sharing of fluids from one animal to another. Now, obviously, many animals do this, even wolves, birds, and so on. But with ants and certain other social insects, it's exceptionally interesting for a lot of different reasons. In this particular case, this serves as a kind of a multifunction tool. First of all, it's a communication tool, it's also a way to share different pheromones or different communication signals, but apparently it's also a way to share different nutrients, different types of immunity, 
and at least in ants, serves as a kind of a social stomach and also as a way to distribute different tasks to different ants and guide them depending on the status of the entire colony. And just like so many other animals, ants don't just have one stomach, they have two. One of them, the minor one, is for their own use, but the larger and the more important one is used by the entire colony. This is where they basically store their shared materials. And so by passing some of the fluids from one ant to another, they're actually sharing some of this metabolic activity. They're sharing their stomach intakes. Which of course means that the entire colony is responsible for the metabolism of every single organism inside the colony, including the workers, including the queen. But a lot of this fluid doesn't just include metabolic activity or metabolic processes, it also includes a lot of proteins related to different types of immunity. And so by interacting with one another and by sharing this fluid, they're essentially trading a lot of different immune defenses, providing each other with nutrition, and are also sharing a lot of really important proteins that might be difficult to produce for a single ant. Here, all of these proteins are shared entirely through the whole colony, which then leads the entire colony to develop what's known as the social immunity, something that would be very difficult to develop for a single ant, but if all of them work together, they end up creating immunity for the entire colony. But the recent study discovered something else really interesting about the social fluid or the social stomach. It turns out that depending on the status and depending on the condition of the entire colony, different biomarkers are going to be present in different types of this social fluid. In this case, by studying roughly around 70 different colonies and approximately 40 individuals from each colony, we have discovered that there were roughly around 500 or so proteins present in this social saliva. And 27 of them were present in every colony and every individual, but everything else was always different. And it entirely depended on the individual itself, on the colony, and the stage of the development of the entire colony as well. For example, in a younger colony, a lot of these social fluid contain many proteins that are usually responsible for breaking down of different types of sugars. And specifically, the types of proteins that would break down sugars extremely fast. And it's most likely that these proteins are used to try to grow the colony as fast as possible by consuming as much sugar as possible. Whereas much older and more established colonies would often have a lot of proteins necessary for different types of growth and different types of transformation and metamorphosis. So basically here, instead of rapid growth, the colony would be focusing on strong foundation and establishing the variety of different ants in the colony. And more interestingly, a lot of these older colonies would also have proteins that would act like hormones, which can also be seen as basically the colony undergoing its puberty. So here the hormonal changes would then result in a different types of growth and development of the colony. And this is really interesting because it basically makes this a, literally a super organism. We cannot really analyze an ant by taking a single ant by itself. We really have to focus on ants being a super organism and look at the entire colony to understand the species. And over time, a lot of these hormones in this social stomach will start acting as signals indicating what the ant, individual ant, should be doing and how it should be behaving. So for example, certain ants that are responsible for taking care of the queen, the so-called nurses, would appear to have a much higher concentration of what's known as the oxidative stress-related hormone. And in this case, it's sort of meant to prevent nurses, or these ants taking care of the queen, from basically dying sooner. They're meant to live longer so they can technically take care of the next generation. In other words, a lot of the social fluid that contains the best materials inside of it will slowly be transferred to these nurses taking care of the queen in order for them to then take care of the rest of the generation and the rest of the young ants. Which also implies that there are some other ants on the opposite spectrum. They practically get nothing out of this. Their whole life becomes a struggle to keep the colony alive but they unfortunately get nothing for themselves. But it looks like this strategy works so well for them because they've literally become the most successful species on the planet. And this is why ants are really important for a lot of different studies in astrobiology. This type of behavior and this type of selfless behavior, in theory at least, could also be widespread across the universe, assuming that there are a lot of other types of aliens living somewhere out there. This behavior seems to be the most beneficial and the one that seems to last the longest. Remember, ants have been here for millions and millions of years. 
we humans have only been here for a very very short time. Which is of course why it's so important to understand how ant colonies work and what makes them so extremely successful. But for now that's kind of all we know. As always you can find this study and all of these new discoveries in the description below and all of the other relevant links there as well. On this note, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and in this case biology, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Either way, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.